Uh, we have a very, very special guest with us today who took a long journey from uh, Washington, D.C. to be here with you to talk about her own journey with United Way Youth Venture. It is now my honor to introduce an incredible young woman, a force to be reckoned with, and someone who once sat in the same seats that you're in right now. As a matter of fact, she's sitting here right now. Some of you may know Kyra Altman as an alumni of both Lemonster High School and the United Way Youth Venture Program. Though she is now in her second year of college at George Washington University, Kyra has continued to be an example of what a change maker truly is. Transitioning from, to college and moving away from family and friends that you've known for years can be tough. Many of you will experience that very shortly in your life. Uh, and yet, Kyra has expanded um, her youth venture, Let's Empower, Advocate, and Do, or the acronym for LEAD, into the forefront of mental health promotion for young people. LEAD's rich, reach is now far beyond the boundaries of North Central Massachusetts. Kyra is an example of how leadership is not limited by age or money or who you know. She has overcome many obstacles, balanced com uh, complete, uh, competing priorities, and charged into uncharted territory as a result of her drive. LEAD has relaunched as a legally recognized nonprofit organization now with a national reach. We are honored to have Kyra join us here today from Washington, D.C., so that she can show each and every one of you that if you dream it, you can do it. Please join me with a warm round of applause to welcome Kyra. Kyra. <laughs> Here you go. All right. And you can either put it back in there or walk with it. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. How are we doing today? Yeah? Yeah, lots of learning today. Oh, I am going to try not to trip on that. If I do, you can laugh with me. Um, also, I'm going to try to hold this while reading my cards. Um, if it doesn't work out, I'll put it up there. But I would rather be with all of you on your level. Um, so my name is Kyra Altman. I am so excited to be here with you today. Um, I am the president of LEAD, which stands for Let's Empower, Advocate, and Do. I currently go to George Washington University in Washington, DC, and I came home yesterday on a flight. Um, growing up in Lemonster, though, so very close to many of you, I went to Skyview Middle School. I liked having those reps up on stage. Yeah. I also went to Lemonster High School. Do we have Lemonster High School here? Yeah, yeah. Great place to be. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. And LEAD, which is my organization, um, started as a youth venture. And we got our first $1,000 funding from this program. Um, so I'm coming to you as an alum. And I'm very excited to speak to you today. Today, I'm also going to try to motivate you and inspire you all to lead now. Leading now is very important. It's part of our campaign. Um, and it's all about taking action now and not waiting for somebody else to do it, but taking action now with your venture. Now, three years ago, I sat in your seats, and I was looking up on stage, and the speaker actually was from DC, which I thought was really cool, even though I had no idea I would be currently going to school in DC. And then two years ago, my team got up here, and we were awarded the Changemaker of the Year Award, which was a really great honor. And now I'm here talking to all of you, um, and I'm honored even more just to be speaking to such incredible, empowering, and inspiring students who are going to be champions in your community as well. So. How many of you have ventures that you have started or that you're thinking about right now? Raise your hand. Awesome, that is amazing, good for you. And that's why this program is so incredible. Now, how many of you right now are ready to lead? Okay, so a little bit of a mixed batch and that's okay. Um, leading now and taking action takes a lot of courage and we're gonna talk about that today and we're gonna talk about embracing failure and why it's so important to move forward. So now I'm going to talk about the first time I decided to lead now. Started in sixth grade, I was in middle school, um, and I, a few things were going on at that time. So I worked in a family restaurant, and that restaurant fundraised for an organization called Canines for Disabled Kids. Um, next slide, please. Um, so Canines for Disabled Kids afforded disabled children with helping dogs if they could not afford them themselves. And I was really intrigued by this organization. I also have a very strong love for dogs. Who here has a dog at home? 
Yes, I love my dog. I actually have more pictures of my dog hung up in my dorm room at school than any of my family or friends. And this is a picture of my dog up here. Her name is Bambi. She's a beagle rescued from Tennessee um, who is now seven years old. So I love dogs. I knew about this organization. I wanted to make a change. And so what I did was I decided to lead now. I decided to plan an event um, that would help afford these children helping dogs. Now this event would be called the Every Paw Counts Dog Walk, and it would raise money, and I, little did I know at the time that it would be very successful, and we would raise $3,000, and it, we, we would have so many people from the community come out. Um, but this was very hard. I was in sixth grade. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was, you know, faking it till I made it, and it was very difficult, and I faced a lot of problems. The first challenge was going up in front of the Parks Commission, and getting permission to host this event. So here's me, a sixth grader, very, very nervous, um, going, standing up in front of all of these adults to ask permission for my event. And this problem was related to getting people to buy into my vision. So I had to stand up, I had to show my own enthusiasm and my own passion, and I had to convince other people to see that same passion and that motivation that I had to allow me to host this event. Other challenges were, you know, getting sponsors, we're getting advertising for the event, things that I had no idea how to do as a sixth grader. I did end up reaching out to the Sentinel and Enterprise in Fitchburg, and they interviewed me, and I ended up being on the front page of the paper. And to this day, the quote that started off the article was probably my favorite thing that has ever been written about me. So this quote said, Kyra Altman is an energetic 12-year-old who talks in a rapid-fire pace and has the single-minded drive of a heat-seeking missile. <laughs> so clearly, the talking fast thing hasn't really improved that much. I still talk pretty quickly. Um, but this quote encompasses who I was at that moment and who I am. You know, you have to have that inner drive and that motivation to get anything done, especially with ventures. And so that quote really means a lot to me and I think it will always be my favorite. Um, so anyways, I also, as I was going through all these challenges, being a middle schooler, not having a car, not having people to help me, I just kept thinking, no excuses. I'm going to be resourceful. I'm going to go to teachers. I'm going to go to parents. I'm going to go to friends and family and find ways to make this happen. And I did. I also took small victories as big victories. Every step counts. Every step brings you toward that movement of social change. So after this dog walk, I went through seventh grade, eighth grade. It was pretty difficult. Middle school is hard. And then I got to high school and I was dealing with fitting in and, you know, trying to be that achiever everyone expected me to be, also trying to get good grades. This stuff is really hard to do. But I was also kind of bored. So I wanted inspiration. I wanted something that would make me feel purposeful. Um, and then this inspiration kind of came out of nowhere and through tragedy. But it changed my life forever. So, next slide, please. All right, so I came home from school one day as a sophomore in high school and I saw this picture on my TV screen. Raise your hand if you know what this is from. So this was after the Sandy Hook tragedy. December 12th, oh, sorry, December 14th, 2012, a man walked into Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut and brutally shot and murdered 26 innocent children and teachers. This was a tragedy. I saw this on my screen and I kept thinking, how, how could this happen? This is so terrible and sad, and it reached out to everybody. The entire community was mourning this great loss. Um, and it really touched me because it was close to home. I'm from Massachusetts, not too far from Connecticut. I also have three siblings, very similar ages of these victims. And one of them, um, Olivia Engel, you can see her. She is um, second row, um, second column. Looks very similar to my little sister. So she also stood out to me as well. So this was my motivation. Motivation is what starts you in your leading now process. So who here understands what their motivation is in your venture? Raise your hand. So this is very important to understand and to continue thinking about. Understand what your motivation is. Understand what's driving you because this is what's going to keep you going when you face challenges and when you're feeling frustrated. Know your motivation. My motivation was to honor these lives lost and also to prevent this kind of tragedy from happening again. Also, 
this tragedy happened, I started researching gun violence and figuring out that it was a very complex issue. Lots of things were going on. There was, you know, there were politics and money and lobbying and gun violence and mental illness and all of these things playing a part. And I had no idea how to even, how to navigate that, how to look at that. And so the first step was educating myself. So I educated myself and I thought, you know, I'm going to host an event that opens up lines of communication and educates the community on these issues in a very nonpartisan way. Um, part of this is really important for you to know. Issues are complex. Your venture will not solve every issue, it will not save every person, and it will not, it will not be the end solution. But that's okay. You are part of a movement for social change, and you are making a difference in no matter what level that you decide to take. So, the night after I saw that picture, I decided to lead now. I texted my friends, I said, guys, meet me at my house on Saturday, we'll get pizza, and we'll talk about this idea that I have. Pizza started this whole thing. Um, so we all met at my house on Saturday, we talked, and we talked about how we wanted to plan an event. And we decided to plan an event that would later be called the 26 Angels Benefit. So the 26 Angels Benefit um, took place on April 6, 2013. It started with completing a youth venture action plan. Who here has done that? Raise your hand. Yeah, nice. So we got our first $1,000 funding after completing an action plan and then competing for the money. Um, this event was really difficult to host. It took blood, sweat, and tears. We had 26 guest speakers, one for each victim. Now each guest speaker, these were important people. These were congressmen, doctors, um, psychologists, mental health experts, college professors, um, Miss Massachusetts, Red Sox alum, amazing people. And that took a lot of time to reach out to them and to get them to come and buy into our vision. But we did it. My team together put in over 1,000 hours of service. Guys, this is not easy to do. This takes a lot of work and a lot of time. Now, through all of this work, we were successful. At the end of the event, over 500 people came to this event and we raised $1,000 that we were able to put back into our community through donating it to community service organizations that advocated for children and safety. After the event, we decided, why do we have to stop? We looked at each other, we realized how much we enjoyed this, how much we enjoyed enacting change and tackling a social issue that meant something to us. So we formed LEAD, which stands for Let's Empower, Advocate, and Do. A few of us decided we would be a student-led organization um, that would tackle social issues every year and then make a venture, act on it, and then create change. In the next year, we did a lot of things. We testified at gun violence hearings. We taught workshops at conferences. Um, we spoke at, at different schools. We took part in different events. We hosted events for other community service organizations. We raised over $10,000 and we gave that to the community through service programs. Very successful and doing lots of different things to advocate for many different kinds of people who we felt didn't have a voice in the community. Now gun violence hearings were something that we were actually invited to go to through a speaker at the 26 Angels Benefit. Again, showing you the benefit of taking advantage of opportunities to, add, to lead now. If we hadn't led now, we would have never met that speaker and we would have never had this chance to testify. Now, we did three testimonials. Um, we all went to the State House. We spent all this time writing these scripts because we were going to stand up in front of these government officials and tell them why mental health mattered to us and why gun violence prevention mattered to us. Again, very controversial topics, very hard to write. But it was us who those government officials paid attention to. For everyone else, they were asleep. But this is really important. People care what youth have to say. That is a benefit to your age. People might say, oh, you're young, you can't do anything. In reality, you're young, so people will be surprised by that, and then they'll give you the time of day. So take advantage of your age. At one of these hearings, after we had testified, Dylan Hockley, who was six years old and died during the Sandy Hook tragedy, um, he was represented by his two parents who were there also testifying. And after they testified, I decided that I would go see them, tell them what we did for the 26 Angels benefit, and just tell them, you know, we really wanted to honor your son. As I walked toward them, and I looked into both of their eyes, I, all I could say was, your child was beautiful. Everything else in my mind completely left me. And to this day, I have no idea why I said that. I have no idea why I couldn't say what I was already planning on saying. But I said, your child was beautiful. And we all started crying. That was really powerful. 
that completely changed who I am today. And I will not ever be the same person after that. And then they actually gave me a holiday card with Dylan's face on it that they held up as they testified. This was an incredible moment, and it only came out of deciding to lead now. Okay. So, after all of this, lead began noticing a pattern. So through every service project that we did, through our testimonials, through all of these things, um, we decided that there was a pattern of mental illness affecting youth, affecting us. We were talking about how common it was in schools. So for example, when I was a freshman in high school, a friend of mine came up to me and told me that she was cutting herself. And I was, you know, straight A student. Um, I had my life together as far as what people thought, and I was really helpless. And I was really at a loss of how to help her. Do I tell someone about it? Will I betray her trust? Um, is there an instruction manual that I can read to tell me how to help her, how to talk to her? And I realized there wasn't, and that was a problem. Mental illness is a problem for our age group because one in five youth suffer from a severe mental illness. One in two people throughout their lifetime suffer from mental illness. It's very common, and 70% of youth go untreated. That's really terrible. So we started discussing why this happened. Together, we also started discussing why health education was focused in physical health and not also mental health. We thought it should be equal. Both your mental and physical health affect each other and they're both very important. So we decided to lead now and take action. Eight seniors in high school, we decided to focus on mental health. We were going to rewrite the health education curriculum at our school so now students can learn how to help somebody. So students know how to identify signs and symptoms in themselves, how to seek help, the resources out there. And so we did it. It took a year, it took a lot of time, it took a lot of editing. I don't really think I did a lot of homework that year, I often joke, because I just would come home and work on this curriculum. Um, and we ended up writing this curriculum for health class. We wanted to make it meaningful and relatable to students. We wanted it to be written by students for students. That mattered to us. So we wrote a 900-page curriculum. This is it on stage. We often joke and we call it our baby because when we hold it, it's so large um, that it's like holding a baby. Also, the binder was the biggest binder Staples offered and I think cost $40. Um, so it was really huge and it was a huge endeavor to take. We had no idea how to write curriculum. We had no idea how to get a class approved by a school district, but we figured it out. And we decided that we weren't gonna take any excuses. We weren't gonna let ourselves get set back. And so we did it. And right now, this class is being taught at Lemonster High School. And our class will be taught for generations to come. Also, we got attention for this curriculum. News anchors from ABC TV in Boston actually came to Lemonster High School and interviewed us and filmed us, and we were on national television. This was really cool, guys. And this came because we worked really hard and because we wanted to get that publicity to then let other schools know, you can also get our curriculum. We can make even bigger change. And I don't know if you're all getting this, but there's a pattern with change making. Your ideas will snowball and they will get bigger and bigger because people want to be a part of this. They're inspired by it, they're motivated by it, and this is a, a domino effect. All right, also, the next step, we were like, you know, yes, this is great that it's at our school, but what else can we do? How can we top this? We decided that we would then go state level. We contacted Senator Jen Flanagan, who is a representative. Um, so Jen Flanagan is a representative in Lemonster, and she focuses on mental health a lot. We contacted her and we said, hey, will you help us write a bill for the state of Massachusetts that requires every health class to talk about mental health in addition to physical health? And she said yes. One meeting is all it took. One email to get that meeting is all it took. But we decided that we would lead now and make that happen. And this bill, everyone, is pending in the state house. We were seniors in high school who had written a bill in the state house. That is a big deal and it did not take that much effort. We just decided we would lead now and we would not let any barriers stand in our way. It really takes motivation and it takes a belief in yourself and your own ability to enact change. Now last year, I was a freshman at George Washington University. I was told about this competition called the GW New Venture Competition. And this competition allowed social ventures and ventures to compete for money and for funding, very similar to youth venture, but just uh, college level. And so I decided I would compete. 
Um, my friends and my best friends are the members of LEAD and they all joke that, you know, even if I tried letting go of LEAD, I never could have um, because I love it. They're my best friends and it makes me so happy doing the work I do. But anyways, I entered this competition and I was told not to. I was told that everyone competing were graduate students at least four years older than me. I was told that everybody competing, they were usually men. I was told that most people competing were business students. I was told all of these different things. I was even told that social ventures, social entrepreneurship was looked down upon and that for-profit ventures were going to always win. They've always won. However, I worked hard. I competed in this competition and we walked away with $32,500. We won. <laughs> This was really exciting for us. All because we decided to lead now, we won. We won the second grand prize, we won the best nonprofit and the best undergraduate venture. This was incredible and this allowed us to incorporate as a legal nonprofit last summer. So I am now standing in front of you as an alum of the Youth Venture Program and as the president of LEAD, a legal nonprofit in the state of Massachusetts. That is a really big deal and we are so honored and happy that we were able to get here. Also, last summer, last summer I, competed, I applied to become a youth mental health first aid instructor. This is a program that LEAD offers and it teaches people how to help someone experiencing a mental health crisis. I became this summer the youngest instructor for this program in the entire country. This was because I decided to LEAD now and send an application in when I knew everybody in that class would be adults. But I did it and we were successful again. Now, next slide please. Now, I want you all to think about all of the things that I've been able to accomplish before the age of 20. I just turned 20 a few days ago. Now, that took a lot of work, and that was very hard to do. Um, and I want you to think about all of the times I could have said, I'm not good enough, I'm not old enough, I'm not smart enough. This is not worth my time, it's too much work. Because I could have said it, and I can tell you this, I thought it a lot. But I didn't, I didn't act on that. I decided, no, I'm going to lead now and not let any excuses get in my way. Now, I came here, I flew home from DC to tell you all that too. You can do this. You're here because you have passion and inspiration and you want to enact change and you will because you believe in yourself. And that's why I value Youth Venture and that's why I value all of you and what you're doing here today. Every day is a chance to make a difference and every day is a chance to lead now. Do not miss any opportunities that come your way. Also, don't let anyone define you. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not old enough, smart enough, good enough, because you are the only one that can define you. And that's very important to understand. Most important, don't make excuses. Don't give up. Don't doubt your ability and always lead now. Let's empower, advocate, and do now. Now, where are we today? Lead is a legal nonprofit. We are a fully functional nonprofit. We are a student led nonprofit. We have members at all different universities across the country. And we have done this through, the, through starting with this program. We are student led and we know that every door opens another. And those statistics, one in five youth and 70% go untreated, those are the ones that we're focusing on in our programs now to improve the mental health of students in high schools and in college campuses around the world. Now, it hasn't always been easy. If you think about the dog walk, when I was standing up in front of a crowd at this Parks Commission, or when you think about the benefit, the 26 Angels benefit, I was in the kitchen sobbing one day because we couldn't find a date. That sounds silly, but it was really discouraging. We couldn't find a date that didn't conflict with other events. Even the curriculum, writing a 900 page curriculum, we had no idea what we were doing, but we persevered and we spent an entire year writing it. And finally, this bill, we went to our senator and the new venture competition, I told all of those people that told me not to compete, I'm going to compete just in case. Because even if I lose, even if I fail, I will have learned something and I will have strengthened my skills. So I want you all to remember, embrace failure and embrace risk. Risk is okay, risk is necessary for change. Now, feeling frustrated often also means that you're learning. And when you learn and when you're frustrated, you become a better leader, a better friend, a better human being in general. 
I've been told that because I'm a woman, I can't be a strong, independent leader and also be a compassionate person. I've been told that my eyes are too big, that my ideas are too big and that they won't, they won't amount to anything. I've been told that I'm too young. I've been told that I have too much energy. I've been told all of those things. But we still decided to lead now as an organization, and I still decided to believe in myself over all of the negative voices surrounding me. That is very important. I want you also to remember to think back to your motivation in times of struggle. Most important thing that's always bothered me since I started Youth Ventures, people ask me, wow, you're young, you're doing this, you know, why have you done this? Why aren't you just being a kid? Or, or why you? Well, the answer is why not? Why aren't all of us waking up every day with the ability to change, with the, with the idea that our ideas will amount to something? We can, we can enact change in our communities just by believing that we can. The answer is why not? Why isn't every single one of the students in our country doing this every day? And that's, again, why this program is so amazing. Don't let anybody limit you or define you. Now, my favorite quote is by Margaret Mead. She's a famous American anthropologist and author, and she says, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, that is the only thing that ever has. This is my favorite quote for many reasons, but the first reason is because it shows the power of a strong group of thoughtful, committed citizens. That is all it takes. Guys, we started it with pizza in my living room. That was, that was the start, that was all it took, and now we are a nonprofit. I need you to understand the amount of struggle and challenge that went from that moment all the way until where we are now. And even now, we're struggling. Even now, I'm learning every single day. And that's okay, but that's what makes this so amazing. The time to act is now. Don't wait, your passion and enthusiasm can help you and it helps people buy into your idea. And it's okay to start small and set higher goals as your venture evolves. Some takeaways from today, you can do this. Think about the reasons you can instead of the reasons you can't. Think about why not, why can't I do this right now? Make that jump and take that risk and think big. Think as if there are no barriers in your way, because if you think you can accomplish it, you will accomplish it. It is all in your mindset. And every day, remember, it's an opportunity to lead now. It's an opportunity to be a leader, even if you're opening the door for somebody or sitting with somebody who's sitting alone at lunch. That's also being a leader. Or it's competing in a new venture competition that everyone told you not to compete in. Every single day is a chance. Now, I'm so grateful for being here today, and thank you all for listening and being a great audience. Um, on this last slide, I have my contact information, so if you have any questions, you would like feedback, anything at all, please reach out to me, and I really mean that. I know people say that, but I really mean that. Reach out to me. I'm still a student. I'm still learning, um, and I'm one of you, so I'm so proud to be here. Also, social media, please stay up to date with LEAD. Um, Facebook is what we use most often to show events and workshops and things that we're doing in the community. Stay up to date with us, connect with us on social media. Um, shameless promo, I know, but I, I really want you guys to get involved. And again, thank you so much for having me today. You guys were wonderful. Thank you so much. What an inspiration. Can we have another big hand for her? And a special shout out to her family. Can you give us a wave? I see you right there. There's Kyra's family. I don't know about you, but I think what I enjoyed the most is that leadership can be big, 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 and leadership can be small. So as much as I was really touched by, so you're in the cafeteria and somebody's sitting alone and you sit with them, that's leadership. You found a nonprofit, that's leadership. You see a problem, even if it's huge. And I remember the curriculum. I remember seeing that. And, it, and I also tell students, how many folks are a little bit disheartened with national politics right now? <laughs> right? So, but at the local level, I will tell you, did you find that the school committee and local leaders just could not wait to help you and they were positive? Um, I definitely did. Again, I think being young is an advantage that we all have and I think people that are young feel afraid 
of that, but it's actually something that will help you, and people want to help you all the time. They do. And you'll be surprised. If you call a school committee member, a mayor, if you call Jen Flanagan, if you call Representative Steve Hay, if you call any of our elected officials, they will take your call and they will want to work with you. And you go to any community leader at any of the colleges here at the Mount Fitchburg State at the United Way, and those leaders are willing to and excited about working with youth. I know that we are here, so thank you. And I don't want you to leave because we have something. Um, we are so excited that we were on the ground floor and watching LEAD get going. We don't want you going back to DC without something totally awesome like a big check, right? <laughs> Oh, there's more, there's more, because, you know, less is not more, more is more, so there's more. So we, as you know, that our, our purpose today is to recognize great leaders and inspire us. Do you want me to help you hold that? It's a big check. It's a big check. You don't want to drop the big check. So I think what we also want to do is create special awards when special people cross our paths. So in addition to the awards I told you about earlier, of course, we have something special to recognize this significant leader in our midst. And, and how is she going to hug you? I'll, I'll hold this for you. And then we'll all hug. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Now you get to hug her. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That was awesome. I don't know about you, but it's Friday and I could start my work week all over again and pretend it's Monday morning because I am jazzed. How about you guys? Or, no, you want it to be Friday, I can tell. I can tell. I can tell. So, finally, uh, so we're going we're gonna to proceed with the Change Maker of the Year Award. Lauren, Change Maker of the Year. So, Change Maker of the Year award this year goes to a venture team that has taken on a venture founded by their siblings. How cool is that? When I was a kid, siblings sometimes were your biggest problem. It's nice to know that we're helping our siblings out. This is to continue to raise awareness and support for families living with autism. Their work has helped to shine a bright light on something that impacts over 3.5 million people across our country. This past year, this outstanding venture has stepped up to be the go-to community leader in the autism community, helping to unite hundreds in the fight to better understand autism. In addition, they're leading the change through their venture. This team has been an example to all venturers on the power of teamwork. They raised thousands of dollars since their inception to help fund research into autism. So you probably already know, I am proud to announce this year's Change Maker Award goes to Blue Crew 2 of Air Shirley High School. Come on up. I'm so proud of you. Do you guys want to say a few words? You can say a few words. Apparently, we're dancing. Can they can they say a few words before we dance, or do you just want to do interpretive dance? No. So, do you want to say a few words and inspire the folks? Sure. Hi, um, I'm Vanessa. This is Cassidy. What's up? Um, <laughs> our adventure started with our friend Nick's sibling, which Nick couldn't be here because he's at a pep rally, but um with his sibling and then we took it over and then I was inspired to do it because my sister was diagnosed with autism and I was actually a part of the center that we give money to for a very long time and then I told Cassidy to join and that's why she joined so <laughs> yeah that's about it but I'm just like you can make a difference no matter what there's always a way you can sign up to do things and you can make a change in your world so yeah thank you Big round of applause. We're proud of all of you, and I know all of you are going to go on to do big things, and I want you to remember who you met today. I want you to remember that you can be up here, and I hope to be giving you a big award or a big check, maybe in the future. Thank you so much, Leanne. Blue Crew, I actually need you to come back here. I have another something for you. So, we love teams, we love teamwork, and so we wanted to do something a little special. We had two awesome sponsors donate some great prizes that we want to share with this team. Davis Mega Maze, I don't know if you guys have heard of Davis Farmland, they've got this awesome Mega Maze, and so 
go have fun, relax. We know you guys have worked hard enough, and there's also some Roll On America tickets that were donated as well. Thanks. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.